Hello and welcome to M3 Systems. Thank you for watching this video where we will be presenting our company and doing a demonstration of the Stella NGC Satellite Navigation Simulator, an innovative and cutting edge product. M3 Systems is a company of about 30 employees which is headquartered in Toulouse, France in the Aerospace Valley. The company was founded by Marc Bolina in 1999 and specializes mainly in satellite navigation and data fusion systems. We also have an air traffic management department which has been around since the company's inception. M3 Systems activities span the entire following GNSS value chain. We do studies and R&D projects, test and measurement activities and products, location-based products, and also provide development of various location-based applications. Some of our most trusted and important clients are the CNES, which is the French Space Agency, the ESA, the European Space Agency, and the DGA, which is the French Ministry of Defense. We are also a National Instruments Alliance partner. We are now going to focus on one of our test and measurement products, namely the Stella NGC Simulator. This product is a cutting-edge solution for satellite navigation professional testing, combining M3 Systems know-how and National Instruments platforms. Let's imagine that a vehicle with a GPS receiver is moving from point A to point B. The GPS receiver computes the vehicle's position thanks to the information it receives from the surrounding GPS satellites. The goal of the Stella NGC simulator is to recreate those same received satellite signals in order to reproduce the same conditions in the lab. The GPS constellation is just one of the current existing global navigation constellations. There are others, such as GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, and SBAS, for which the Stella NGC simulator can also generate signals. Each satellite constellation broadcasts signals on different frequencies, such as L1, L2, and L5, and these are also taken into account by the Stella NGC. The Stella NGC simulator might seem like a great equipment to have, but what specifically is it used for? Well, it's used for system qualification of navigation systems, for research and development activities, for system integration projects involving satellite positioning, for algorithm validation in engineering activities, and last but not least, for product testing. Shortly, we'll be showing a video which will present how the Stella NGC is used to simulate the trajectory of a receiver. On the left here is the Stella NGC GUI and its associated National Instruments platform. The setup depicted in this slide shows the Stella NGC feeding an input to the GPS receiver on the right to create a virtual trajectory from point A to point B. I'll now be presenting the Stella NGC GUI interface where two tabs will mainly be used. The configuration tab is used to prepare the simulation where I first need to determine my receiver's trajectory. Once the configuration is complete, I'll switch over to the simulation tab to start my scenario. Now here's the simulation screen, which will be used to monitor the simulation as it is executing, interact with the different satellite powers, and record IQ data samples. The National Instruments hardware configuration is modular and easy to use. All you need is a screen, a keyboard, and a mouse. Here we have a PXI Express 1082 chassis with a PXI Express 8135 embedded controller, which does all the simulation software display. The radio signal is transmitted by the PXI Express 5644R, which is a vector signal transceiver. The navigation signal is transmitted through this cable to the device under test where in this setup we have chosen to use a U-Block 6 GPS receiver. In this demo I'm going to show you how to test a receiver by making it think that it's traveling along its trajectory when in fact it's not moving at all. Here is the configuration screen of the Stella GUI where a user defines all the scenario parameters. I can quick start a simulation by selecting one of the predefined scenarios. Two predefined scenarios are available, one simulating an aircraft, the other a ground vehicle heading north at constant speed. The user defined section is however used if you'd like to define your own specific scenario. The simulation date frame defines the scenario's start and duration times. 
The constellation parameters frame is used to define the satellite parameters by loading a Renex or Yuma file, one for each of the constellations you want to simulate. The antenna frame is used to specify the antenna parameters. The offset parameters here are used to define the antenna's position with respect to the receiver position. The heading section defines the antenna pointing direction in three dimensions. The elevation mask is used to simulate different satellite signal blinding configurations. Three presets are proposed, the urban canyon, urban and rural presets, and a custom configuration is also available. For the purpose of this demo, let's consider that we are in a rural environment. The Set Antenna button lets you modify the antenna pattern. A default omnidirectional antenna is provided by the simulator, but a custom antenna may also be loaded into the scenario. Here you can see the antenna diagram pattern as I am loading it into the scenario. The receiver frame defines the MOBOS trajectory during the simulation. The user can create a simple trajectory by defining a second order polynomial in three dimensions in degrees and meters. For a customized trajectory definition, the mobile type list box lets the user import an NMEA file from a previously recorded trajectory. I'm now going to select a scenario that was recorded during one of our data collection campaigns. As you will see, the trajectory path gets automatically displayed as an image. And the scenario duration is also updated with respect to the loaded recording duration. The atmosphere frame is used to define the propagation channel parameters and is composed of two models, namely the ionosphere and troposphere models. For the ionosphere model, the default setting is set to no ionosphere, which means that no perturbations are simulated. The Klobuchar option lets the user manually insert the alpha and beta coefficients. For a more realistic simulation, an ionics file can be loaded to define real ionospheric conditions. For the purpose of my demo, I'm going to omit the ionospheric model. The troposphere model can also be deactivated by choosing no troposphere or activated using the SBAS MOPS selection. To quickly switch between different custom scenarios, use this frame to save or load to and from your personal list of scenarios. The RF parameter section defines the master clock and lets you modify the peak power level of the broadcasted radio frequency signal. I'm now ready to initialize the simulation and I'll do so by clicking this button. Before going any further, a pop-up summarizes the defined atmospheric conditions to warn the user that some inconsistencies might have been configured. In some cases, this could be intentionally wanted by the user. Now the simulator is pre-processing the scenario, and the simulator is ready. Let's have a look at the simulation tab. The simulation tab is used to monitor the ongoing simulation. First, we're going to launch the simulation. A pop-up warns the user to make sure the equipment under test is protected with attenuators. In the GPS frame, you can find a data grid providing information about the simulated satellites. GPS channel status provides the simulated satellite IDs and positions. Satellites can individually be enabled or disabled while the simulation is running. In the L1 tab frame, additional satellite information is provided, such as pseudo range, Doppler, power, and carrier phases. The time frame displays a week number, time of week, and a flashing LED is a one second GPS pulse. The receiver position frame provides a simulated receiver position in two different coordinate systems. The recording IQ data frame permits raw data recording into a file. The power spectrum frame displays a spectrum of the simulated signal. For those of you familiar with the GPS signal, you'll recognize the characteristic shape of its spectrum.
I'm now going to launch the UBLOX receiver control interface to see how the simulated signal can be processed by a receiver. Here's the GUI interface, composed of a Google Maps on the left and some more technical elements on the right. I'm now going to zoom in on the receiver to see how it's moving along its trajectory. In the upper right hand corner you can see the receiver's position as it's evolving over time. The sky plot shows the satellite positions in the sky and the bar graph below shows the received satellite powers and the green ones are the ones that are used by the receiver to compute its position. I'm now going to show both interfaces to see how the received position matches the simulated position. Well that just about concludes this demo showing you how you can test your receiver with the Stella NGC simulator. I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't hesitate to contact us for more information about our products.